Hello, this is our presentation of the Hudson Bay Arctic Lowlands. Hope you enjoy. The Arctic Lowlands is located in the Arctic Archipelago and in northern Canada. The Arctic Lowlands make up a fourth of Canada. The Arctic Lowlands were formed by the movement of glaciers across the surface about 7,500 years ago. Fresh water in the Arctic Lowlands is covered up with ice 10 months a year and the months that it is free of ice is in July and August. The lowlands were formed by glaciation and by faulting in rock which is what caused there to be islands in the lowlands too. The glaciers in the Arctic lowlands have disappeared but the land is still frozen throughout the year making farming very difficult to do. The lowlands were also formed by sedimentary rock making the land very rich in oil, coal, limestone, and natural gas. Many animals still live in the very cold climate, like the polar bear, arctic fox, and many more. Now that you've heard a bit of information about the arctic lowlands, it's time to let Alexander tell you about the overall details of this land. The arctic tundra is an almost lifeless area. It is dry, cold, and there are barely any humans even living near there because of the extreme cold conditions. It got its nickname, the Cold Desert, because there's nothing but snow there. There are almost no trees, no animals, and no plants. Since the main part of the Arctic tundra is just snow, it's very hard for animals to find their water, especially if they live on the opposite side of the tundra from where the Hudson Bay is. You might be thinking to yourself right now, can't you just eat the snow? The thing is that, first of all, it's very unhealthy because of the temperature is so cold that self snow doesn't even melt in the summer, but also because of the same reason, the snow turns into very hard ice, ice, ice chunks, which would be really hard for animals to get their water from by chewing on that. Most plants can't live there, since there are very, very high winds that can just blow them out straight from the ground. But there are lots of rocks scattered all over the tundra. Plants like moss live behind or around the rocks, which protect them from the winds and snow. The Arctic tundra is located right below the Hudson Bay, which makes a great location for Arctic animals that need water, like polar bears, to live there. There are also lots of seals and walruses along the shores as well. The temperature is extremely cold as I mentioned before. In the summer, the average temperature is around 10 degrees Celsius, but in the winter, it comes in at a mean negative 30 degrees. It makes it really hard for most animals and humans to survive in the winter, which is why there are only animals that are used to this type of cold weather that were meant to live there. The Arctic tundra is not the only cold area next to the Hudson Bay. It is part of more cold landforms, which will be talked about throughout this video. Both together, they cover up a huge part of Canada. In fact, it takes up hundreds of kilometers. The soil there is also really bad, and there is very little time for humans that live nearby to grow anything because of A, the bad soil, and B, because there's nothing, there's snow covering the grounds all of the time except for summer. Now that you know some basic information about the Arctic tundra, let's start talking about it more in depth. Even though the Arctic tundra is considered to be one of the world's harshest environments, some plants and animals have adapted to this type of climate and made the tundra their homes. Some of the animals include mux oxen, polar bears, wolves, arctic foxes, and lemmings, among many more. For the plants, there is a large variety of over 1,700 different species like dwarf, grass, moss, and mountain squirrel. Now, Alexandra will inform you about the natural resources of the arctic lowlands and the main use of land. Hello, my name is Alexandra, and I will be talking about the main use of, the, of this landform and the natural resources it contains. The Hudson Bay Arctic Lowlands lies between the Canadian Shield and the Inuitian region. The location of the Hudson Bay Arctic Lowlands makes it very hard for there to be much plant growth or farmland. This is because the lowlands are a tundra that experience high winds, very cold weather, and frozen soil. This area is not meant for agriculture because the land is so cold and covered in permafrost, meaning the soil, the soil can't absorb water properly, leading to difficult plant growth. Plants are found in the Arctic lowlands, but they are sparsely vegetated. The areas with the most plant growth are the wetlands and the swamps, and they include moss, grass, sedge, small shrubs, and trees. Above the permafrost, there is a thick layer of dwarf tundra shrubs that can survive this temperature. As you can see, agriculture and plant life is very limited. 
but the Arctic lowlands generate income through natural, non-renewable resources. The Palzoic sedimentary rock formed the lowlands. Non-renewable resources that can be found are coal and natural gas deposits, and these are found through mining. Lignite, which is a weaker form of coal, is also mined. Limestone can be found in the lowlands, and there is a lot of it. The Arctic lowlands makes most of its income through mining. The mine Nanzavik mine is located in Nunavut and it produces lead and zinc and it was Canada's first mine in the Arctic. Lead and zinc is also mined in Little Cornwallis Island north of Baffin Island in Nunavut. It was opened in 1981 and closed in 2002 because all the resources were used up. The mine produced over 21 million tons of lead and zinc and its market value was over 15 billion. Gold is also mined in the lowlands, and it is mined in the mainland of Contwido Lake, southwest of Bathurst Inlet. As you can see, there is a good amount of natural resources in the Arctic lowlands, but the high production cost and transportation difficulties make it very hard to obtain these resources. Animals also provide resources because they are used for food and clothing. Skiing can also be done in the Arctic lowlands in Owaituk National Park where you can ski on Mount Thor which is 1,675 meters tall. Hundreds of skiers go there every year and this is another way the Arctic lowlands gain income. As you can see, this area is not very good when it comes to agriculture or climate. The fact that, is it, that it is difficult for plants to grow is a real challenge in the lowlands and this is caused by the cold, severe climate. The resource, resources are still being mined to this day and the Arctic lowlands make a big part of Canada's oil and natural gas production. My time is now over, let's pass it to Yulia and see what information she has gotten about the Arctic lowlands climate. Climate. The climate in the Hudson Bay Arctic lowlands is very dry and cool with extremely high winds. The maximum depth of snow is below a thousand millimeters. Due to these temperatures, vegetation growth is very limited. The climate in these lowlands tends to differ from coast to inland and coast is very dry while the inland not as much. Even though the inland is warmer, it is also drier. Animals usually inhabit the eastern and western coasts of the ecozone due to the dry air in the inlands. During January, the coldest month of the year, temperatures range from negative 25 degrees Celsius to negative 30 degrees. In April, the temperatures rise high enough to break up the ice, causing water levels to drastically rise. The Hudson Bay Arctic lowlands receive an average of 700 millimeters of rain yearly most of it in the south. During spring, minor floods are expected, allowing small shrubs to grow. On a yearly average, the normal summer temperature is around negative four degrees. Global warming has affected us for years now, but has only begun affecting the Hudson Bay Arctic lowlands since the mid 1990s. The lowlands have warmed up by an estimated three degrees Celsius in the past few years, which is warm enough to begin to lose ice. Because of this global problem, winters are now shorter in the Hudson Bay Arctic lowlands, meaning shorter periods of ice coverage, causing more evaporation and lower ice levels. The ice now begins to melt in the spring and resume again in the autumn. Where is the Hudson Bay Arctic Lowlands? It's a division lying between the Canadian Shield and the Inuitian region. It's south of the surfaces and lowland plains. 
the Arctic lowlands are made up of a series of islands located in Canada's far north, which are also part of the Arctic archipelago lying between the Canadian Shield and the Inuitian region. Hudson's Bay and James Bay are also part of the Arctic lowlands. The land area is 320,000 kilometers squared or 3.2% of Canada's land surface. 40% of the sedimentary basin is in the middle of the Canadian Shield. The remaining 60% lies beneath the Hudson's Bay and the James Bay. In conclusion, the Arctic Lowlands is a division between the Canadian Shield and the Inuitian region. It takes up 3.2% of Canada's land. The harsher climate of this region makes it difficult for vegetation as the ground remains frozen all year round. Although this region is extremely cold, it has resources such as zinc, lead, oil, natural gas, and coal. This is the Hudson's Bay Arctic Lowlands.